if you can get the air conditioning to cool down to around 40 degrees, son, you've done something. That's some air conditioning right there. And that little orifice tube change will help you with that. Now you want to have your pressures right about 30 and between 150 and 175. Now we got this truck idled up a little bit, so it's going to greet a little higher pressures. Okay, now to finish up, we need to pull the jumper out of the low pressure switch plug here and reattach that. The low pressure switch actually dictates the amount of, uh, of running that the compressor does. The idea is to keep the compressor from you know, blowing the hoses apart, but really when the pressure gets, when it gets hotter outside, the pressure is greater on this switch. As a result, the compressor will be on more in a hot situation. It just sort of works out that way. It's part of the design. Now, it's very important that you don't leave these caps off as you unhook your hose. Now that's coming out of the hose there. You're gonna, gonna lose a little bit out of the hose. And it's very important you put these plugs back on. You don't ever wanna put the hoses on or take the hoses off when there's a lot of pressure on the system. You do not want to take the hoses off while the engine is running. Make sure now, one of the main places that these things leak is out of this little ball valve here. It's real important that when you put the cap back on the high pressure port there that you put the gasket in here. Without the gasket, these pesky little buggers will leak. The vast majority of the leakage I find on these trucks is from the high pressure port. The other place they like to leak is out of the low pressure switch itself. Right here, there's a little gasket back here, and, uh, uh, and that's where they like to leak also. But this one had Freon in it when we got here, so I know that it's, it'll pressurize. Now we've completed this repair, and the customer can go back to carrying patients with it. Okay, so what did we learn here? First of all, when we take the low pressure reading in a good functioning unit, you want to have it about 30 PSI. High pressure should be around 150 to 170, 175, somewhere in there. Here's the thing with gauges. You don't ever want to attach them while the, the vehicle is running or the, the system is on, okay? Because you're creating huge pressure here and you don't want to have the thing pop off and hurt you or anything like this. If you get a huge high pressure and you get almost no low pressure, that means that there's a clog in the system somewhere. Uh, uh, usually you'll get some debris right here at the orifice tube. When you get debris buildup at the orifice tube, it's generally an indicator that the compressor is fixing to go away, especially if it's metal shaped. That's why you always check the orifice tube when you do any service to the system. When a compressor starts to wear out, you'll see this pressure go up and this pressure go down. In other words, this one will start to creep up about 50, and this one will start to creep down to about 100, 110, something like this. That means that the compressor is no longer making the pressures adequately and as a result you're not getting the pressure differential across the orifice tube that you need to make it cold. Two things to make your air conditioning cold. A lot of people like to just, oh, just add a can of Freon. No. Every couple years you want to evacuate the coolant system and get all of the, the, the old Freon out and get all of the moisture that may have accumulated in there out and if it's really bad you want to go ahead and, and replace the accumulator. Replace it with fresh Freon. But before you do that, replace it with a smaller orifice tube. This is a factory air number 38639. Now 35 is the stock number, but 38639 is a little bit smaller orifice for it to pass through, which will get you down to around that 40 degree mark. Now let me say something about this particular change. You don't want to run this in, in northern climates, especially if it's cooler, because it will freeze up the evaporator. This is especially good if you live in Florida or, or in the southern states or out west uh, where it gets hot. This will help you considerably. When you do the orifice tube change, it's important that you don't run it on full blast below 80 degrees. In other words, you don't want to have it in max air with a blower on full below 80 degrees. What will happen is, is the evaporator will freeze up and eventually damage it. 